right now, our composition looks something like this. So we have four layers. We have the sky, which I've adjusted a little bit. So if you want to make your image look like mine, just go to the sky. I stretched it inward a little bit. You can compare it to the original smart object. I stretched it in a little bit and I stretched it up and down a little bit. Then we have Krista driving, which is already masked out. We have Krista outside, which includes this field and the rest of the car. And then we have the curves adjustment layer that we applied to the field by Krista. There's a little, hmm. I think I missed an area on my layer mask, so I'll, I'll click on my layer mask. Yeah, for some reason, I had a little black dot in there and I could see it on here. Okay, well, now we're ready to start kind of fine tuning this image. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some adjustments to each of the layers and make it look more like one continuous image that was in one location. Because right now the exposures are slightly different. The sky doesn't really match. These hills don't really match. And this border, now, because I brought the sky up a little bit and the hills are now showing back here, the border doesn't look good. So I'm gonna show you a trick to fix that. Um, let's start with that. So what I'll do is I'll disable this curves adjustment. And then I want to try to make this back area where we see this shadow back here match a little bit better. So I'm gonna lighten that up with the dodge tool. So let's control J to copy and paste our layer. I'll disable the lower layer. No, you know what I'll do is I'll just disable this upper layer. We'll save this in case I want to kind of start over. When you dodge and burn directly onto a layer, or do any changes directly onto a layer, remember that's destructive editing. And so I usually make a copy of my original layer and then I'll delete it when I'm sure that I like the changes I've made. But if I do something awful and I, I just want to start over, I'll have that original layer saved. So. I'll disable this copy that I've made. I'll work on the original layer, but I have that copy just in case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Dodge tool. And remember, Dodge lightens. So I'm going to bring my brush size up a little bit. Up here we have our tool controls. I can target whatever range I want. In this case, it's the shadows that I want to lighten. So I'll make sure it's select to shadows. I'll bring the exposure down a little bit. This just um, determines how strong the dodge tool is as I brush. Then I'll just start brushing over this. Oh, let's see, I'll go in here, bring my brush down. I'm gonna try to lighten that a little bit better. Good, make sure when you're doing these adjustments that the hardness of whatever brush you're using is turned all the way down. If I paint above here, above the border of this layer, it doesn't matter because if I turn off these layers, you can see there's nothing above it. And because I'm painting or dodging on this layer, the changes won't affect like the sky, for example, behind it. So I can just keep going like that. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit too. And if you have the exposure of the dodge tool set down, it allows you to kind of Go over a few times, but it won't be too intense. And you can make it more intense of an effect if you need to. But usually with this type of thing, less is more. Undo that. Okay, and then I'll go over here by the house. Actually, this hill is already decently bright, so. that area and the changes aren't super noticeable but I'm bringing up the highlights and I'll just go over the top again mm.
Okay. I'll bring my brush size down over here and just try to get this area. This image of Krista is on the same layer we're working on, so I just have to go around her down here. But if I bring my brush size down, it should be fine. Because I'm using this tool at such a low exposure value, if I did kind of go over on Krista a little bit, it's not super noticeable. And I'm targeting my shadows. And because most of her is more mid-tones and highlights over here, it doesn't really make a huge difference if I overlap a little bit on accident. Okay, so yeah, this is looking better. I'll bring this up a little bit in this area a little bit. Go over right here one more time. Hmm, I might have overdone it. So I'll undo. Control Alt Z to undo. Now this top border, we're gonna fix that in a second, so don't let yourself stress about that right now, because I know it doesn't look good. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's blending a little bit better now. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna fix this border. So remember the smudge tool, which looks like this, allows you to take pixels and kind of blend them around, depending on how you move your brush. We can apply that effect to the layer mask. So the layer mask, I'll click on it, it looks like this, right? If I use the smudge tool, I can just click and drag down slightly to bring down the layer mask. Then when we go back to our image, we see this area doesn't have that disgusting border. So I'll undo those changes so we can see them in real time as we do them. Bring the strength down a little bit because again, I don't want to go too crazy. I just want to get rid of this little fringe effect that we see from when we originally cut out this image. Oh, oops. So I, am, I have my layer selected, so any smudge I do is going to affect the layer itself. You don't want to do that, so make sure you have the layer mask selected. Now bring it down just a touch. And that already looks so much better. We don't want to get rid of all the definition between the images because we want it to be able to be somewhat noticeable that there's a hill here and then there's a hill behind it. When you use the smudge tool, I'll go back to the mask so you can see, it does blur it a little bit, which is fine. We just don't want to go overboard. We want to have somewhat of a definition between our borders. Again, I had the actual layer selected instead of the layer mask. And just go until you get rid of that haze. This little trick can be super useful. I brought the arm down a little bit, so I'll try to bring that back up. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to fix this arm anyway in a minute, so we won't focus on that right now. Just make sure the hills are good. So let's compare, I have right here the area that I've adjusted, and then over here is the area I haven't gotten to yet. If we compare it to the original layer that we saved, you can see the changes that have taken place. It's already making a huge difference. This is much more believable than this. Okay, great, so let's keep going. You can see that I get really close in on the image. Sometimes, it's easy to get carried away with detail. But you just kind of have to know when to quit sometimes. But for a first pass, I let myself get in here just to make sure I'm doing everything right. Because there are these little areas, like you see I was just working here, where I really needed to zoom in and get super close to make sure I was not over or under doing it, but that I was getting rid of the fringe completely. So just quickly do the rest of this. The areas where it's more smooth is a lot easier. 
If you don't have a graphics tablet, I'm just using my mouse right now and you can see it's working just fine. If you don't have a tablet to use a pen and have those more precise hand controlled movements, lowering the strength of your tools will usually help because it allows you to, instead of in one motion, getting what you want, to take a few passes at it or a few clicks with less precision, but you still can get the effect you want. Now let's look at that hill. That looks great right here. I think I want to bring this down a little more. Yeah. Okay, so that looks so much better. We see that there is a hill in front and then a hill behind, but they look <laughs> like they belong in the same place. As if I just pointed the camera and shot these two things. In composite photography, that's one of the most important things. Just have it be believable and have nothing distract from the image. This obviously isn't the most important part of the picture. It's not gonna be the main focus, but I want it to look good so that it doesn't take away from the main focus. And I'm not worrying about this area over here because I think after the tractor, I'm gonna crop it. So uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that house or the rest of this. All right, the next thing I wanna do is make this sky look a little better. Within the image, it looks just a little too dark. She wouldn't be this bright if the sky was that dark. So I'm gonna lighten it quite a bit. I'm gonna change the hue to make it a little more of a baby blue because that's what it looked like in person when I was taking this picture and it was awesome. So I wanna recreate that look here. You can also see that I am a moron and didn't clean my camera sensor before I went out and shot these images. It doesn't matter too much if you're shooting something more normal, but if you're shooting a bright sky, you will see every little fleck on there. So we'll have to clean that up. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to be able to use the healing brush tool on the sky, I have to rasterize the layer, which means I have to convert it from a smart object to a normal layer. What I'll do is I'll make a copy of this layer by clicking Control J, rasterize this top layer so that I still have my smart object in my document. So all I have to do is right click, rasterize layer. If I don't do that, you can see if I try to use my healing brush tool on here. Um, oh, I want to use my healing brush or my spot healing brush tool because it'll do it automatically. Remember the healing brush tool, you have to define a source where it will clone from. Spot healing brush tool, you click and it will look at the surrounding pixels and try to make a correction where you clicked. If I tried to click, it'll say smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. So I'll click OK. It'll rasterize my smart object and now this layer doesn't have the little symbol, meaning it's a smart object and it's just a normal image layer now. So I'll click here. Just try to get rid of these specs real quick. If I zoom out, I can see really obviously where they are. You can see that it does a really good job of doing this automatically. I don't have to get too detailed because as I mentioned before, we're gonna blur the sky a little bit. You can see, if I zoom in here, you can see how pixelated the sky is compared to her. It looks kind of like there's grain on it. So we'll blur it a little bit so it'll match the rest of the picture better. Some of the dots kind of blend in and just look like darker areas of cloud, which is convenient. Remember that brain will often see things as it's presented instead of what actually is taking place. If I looked at this cloud and there was a darker area, I would assume that just was part of the cloud in an area that was darker instead of an error on my image sensor. Okay, so I think this looks good. Now we can compare before and after, especially right up here. It's made a great difference. Okay, so before moving on, let's blur this sky. We can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, this is basically the main type of blur. I'll zoom in a little bit better so as I work on it, my preview will be closer up and I can see the changes. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now because I have preview selected here, I'm seeing it on my main image. 
I'm gonna bring this down just to the point where I don't see that graininess from the pixels when I've scaled up this image so much. So just between 1.5 and 2. Let's go with 1.7. Maybe. Uh, maybe a little less. Yeah, 1.5 I think is good. 1.6. <laughs> okay. That's the blur. That was a destructive edit, and I can't go change that blur back now to how it was originally. With smart objects, you can add filters and adjust them later on. So if I went filter, blur, so I have my smart object selected, and I went to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, we'll do a super obvious one. Hit OK. Now it shows up as a smart filter on my smart object, which I can turn on and off. I'll zoom in so you can see. I can turn it on and off. I'll undo all that because we don't want to adjust the smart object layer. We want to adjust the rasterize layer that we've already been able to use the healing brush on. This is looking great. Next step is to lighten the sky. So I will add an adjustment and it will be a curve. Curve adjustment allows you to take specific tones within your image. So here are my shadows, highlights, and mid-tones. And make localized adjustments there. So I want to bring, in general, everything up a little brighter. Yeah, somewhere in here where it's not too washed out. And I'm still seeing all that detail I've preserved in my cloud image. I think that looks good. Okay, now my sky is so much brighter and happier, and it just makes sense. <laughs> now I've lightened up this hill back here quite a bit, and it's looking a little less realistic now. So what I'll do is, with my adjustment layer, layer mask, I'll click that, click on my paintbrush, and lower the opacity of my paintbrush. So I'm not painting at full force, but now when I go here, I can paint out, oh, I have to choose black to paint it out. Paint out some of the effect, and it will darken the hill a little bit more. And it can be pretty subtle. I'll have the bottom areas of the hill set to be a little darker. So now I can turn on and off that layer mask by shift and clicking on it. You can see I've darkened that hill. Now it matches this field in front of it a little bit better but it's still brighter in general, and a little happier. Okay, now I want to adjust the hue of my sky because I want it to look a little more baby blue. So all I have to do is go to Adjustments, Hue Saturation, I'll bring the hue this way a little bit. You can see as I change it, it changes the color of my layer. So I just wanna bring it this way a little bit. When I make changes up here, I can toggle on and off the visibility of the adjustment layer to compare the changes. So you can see it's pretty subtle. I'm just slightly changing the color of the sky to be more baby blue. And now what I want to do is I want to bring up the vibrance. So saturation and vibrance do the same thing. They'll both add saturation to your image, but if you use the vibrance adjustment layer, you have both options. If I bring up the saturation to 100, you can see how washed out it is. If I bring the saturation back down, and I bring the vibrance up, they're similar, but the vibrance doesn't allow the image to become as washed out. So I'll just bring it up to like 60. Now that is a sky. Look at that. That's a, that's a place I want to go to. Okay. So I think those are the only adjustments I'll make to this sky background. What I'll do now is I'll shift, so I have the top layer of everything that's affecting my sky. Select that, shift click to the bottom layer, click the new group icon, and now it'll put those in a little group on its own. Go that sky. Good, and now my sky as a whole is all just as one group. 
Now let's take a look at Krista inside this car. I want it to look a little darker in here because the, the point of the image is that like this is happy, this is a little more dull. So I want to exaggerate that a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll go to this layer, Krista driving, and add a curve adjustment to bring down the colors a little bit. You can see in curves, if I move one of these end points, I can adjust the lights and the darks more dramatically. So I'll bring the darks down to about there. And then I'll just make this a little more of a curve. All right, so now it's darker in here. What I wanna do next is add a levels adjustment layer to really make it look like she's behind glass. Usually if something's like in the far distance of your image and there's a lot of like air, dust, haze between it, the contrast of that area will be a little less and the black levels will be raised a little bit. So what I can do, the same thing applies to like someone behind glass, to really show that there's something in between her and the camera. I'll add a levels layer. And levels is similar to curves. I can adjust the luminance values of the shadows, midtones, and highlights, but I can also adjust the output levels, which are my black point and white point. So right now the black value is at zero which is fully black. If I bring it up a little bit, look at my picture. Now all the black levels in the image are raised up, so it's saying instead of black being black, this gray is the new black, and everything is a little bit lighter than that. So I don't want to be that dramatic, so I'll bring it down to about 13. Then I'll bring my white point down a little bit as well. About there. Yeah, I think that looks great. It looks like she's really behind glass now, which is exactly what I wanted to convey with this. Because I've added these adjustment layers to my image, the edge of the windshield right here is a little too dark and it's not matching the car as well, like it did originally. So to bring that back, what I'll do is I'll add a little hue saturation effect. Bring the saturation down. Remember, there, it's changing everything inside the car. I'll add a mask later so it just affects this border. Adjust the hue to make it look a little more blue. You can see that these changes are affecting everything under these adjustment layers. So what I'll do real quick is shift Click through all these, create a new group. I'll call it Krista Driving. Change the blend mode to normal. Pass through blend mode allows the effects within your group to exit the group and affect layers beneath it. Normal makes it so that the effects cannot leave the group folder. I need to add a little more saturation to this. So I'll just go to Hue Saturation, and I can go back. I think I brought it down too much. Bring the lightness up a little bit. There we go, now, now it looks a lot more like the car. I think that's what I needed to do. If I bring the lightness up and the saturation up, it matches the color of that car a little better. Okay. Now, because I don't want to affect everything inside of here, I'll add a layer mask to this effect. By going to my paintbrush, I'm painting inside the areas of the windshield that I don't want this to affect. All right, I'll, I'll click on the layer mask to make sure that I can fill in all of these little areas that I missed. Over to this edge, doesn't matter as much because again, that area is going to be cropped out. I don't usually crop until the last step, but I keep in mind what the composition of my image will be. So that looks good. As you can see, as I'm adding these adjustment layers, applying like the normal as opposed to the pass through blend mode, and then adding masks onto the adjustment layers themselves, allows me to fine tune these adjustments that I'm making. 
instead of just adding one adjustment to the whole image. Because different areas of the image need different things, right? I'll fix this a little bit. Looks like I missed it. the edge here. As you add adjustments, keep in mind what you want your image to convey. And usually that'll help you know when to quit or when to go even further with the adjustments you're making. All right, so I like that mask. And now this border of the windshield matches a little bit better to the outside. You can see that as we add these adjustment layers, we're able to apply what we've learned so far to make these adjustments very specific because not all areas of the image need the same adjustments, um, especially if they're a composite, you know, and they're three different images. We need to make very local adjustments to different areas. So like right here, I was able to match the color better but keep the inside the same using a layer mask on my adjustment layer. I was able to have these adjustments without having to apply them to this image, have them only show in this group by changing the blend mode of the group from pass through to normal. So these tricks that we're learning to control exactly what we're doing with our image are really going to come in handy, especially as you start working on bigger and more complex composites. You can make such specific adjustments to such detailed or small areas of your image, and it really lets you have full control of what you're doing in Photoshop.